Hey, up. Right, um, C-proved motorcycle clothing. Actually, a better phrase for this is PPE, personal protection equipment. Over the years, I've made a few videos about sort of clothing that I wear on my motorcycle, and I constantly get criticised for the fact that, you know, it doesn't contain armour, or it's not proper motorcycle equipment, it's just motorcycle inspired clothing. But I'm being irresponsible, I shouldn't be showing it to people. I mean, some people get really um, emotional and aggressive about it, and it, it's clear to me that a lot of people misunderstand PPE for motorcycling. And I'll get into that later in the video. First of all, I'll just tell you a, a, a sh quick story. When I was in the police back in the late 1980s, I was put on a course that sort of centered around safe searching and detection of explosive devices and how to sort of differentiate between different configurations of improvised devices with a view to reconnaissance uh, before the bomb squad arrived. Now, part of that course was held at Catterick Army Camp, where the army uh, obligingly blew up several things for us, um, you know, cars, refrigerators, crash test dummies, to demonstrate the, um, you know, destructive capabilities of just one pound of C4, which is the military-grade Semtex. As part of this course, um, they showed us these bomb disposal suits, or blast suits, uh, and I know that we had them uh, at most police stations as well. And we're given the opportunity to wear them, try them on, and yeah, when you had them on, you felt absolutely invincible. Very reassuring, you felt safe as houses, but when we actually pushed the instructor as to what protection, you know, these actually give, um, he freely admitted none whatsoever. Parts of your torso might survive, but your arms, your legs, and your head would be blown off instantly. And you actually had to be quite a distance away from an explosion for them to have any real life-saving effect at all. Now, people have laid down challenges to me to explain myself, uh, because I have expressed views in the past that I, I take a pragmatic approach to whether or not I wear armour when I'm riding a motorcycle. It's my personal choice, that's down to what I decide, just as it is to all of you. You decide whether you're going to wear armoured jackets or trousers or whatever. That's down to you, it's not for me to persuade you one way or the other. And I've never advocated to anybody that they shouldn't wear armour. I've always sort of given alternative options for people to, uh, you know, wear an action vest underneath uh, a jacket or something like that if they want to keep safe and they want to wear armour. But obviously that doesn't stop the trolls from having a go. Now, here in the UK and a lot of other countries, it's mandatory to wear a CA-approved motorcycle helmet when you're riding a motorcycle on the public roads. If you're driving a car, you have to wear a seatbelt. They've mandated that we have to have things like ABS fitted to our vehicles. But, despite the fact that CA-approved armour has been available since 1993, it's not mandatory to wear a CE-approved motorcycle jacket or trousers. I realise that in some countries, um, France and Spain springs to mind, you have to wear CE-approved motorcycle gloves, but it's not mandatory to wear, you know, armoured jackets and trousers. Why is that? If this equipment is so good and makes you so safe, you know, in the nanny states that we all live in now, why aren't the making us wear them? Well, I can't find a definitive answer about that anywhere on any of the government websites or EU websites. So I'm going to offer you my opinion and please note, it is just my opinion. Enough research has been done to conclude that crash helmets, ABS and seat belts can save lives. But there's no evidence to suggest that armoured jackets and armoured trousers save lives, so there's little point in mandating it legally. 
Now, hear me out. Watch this video to its conclusion before jumping into the comments section and giving me an earful about your views on the subject. CE approval for, um, you know, motorcycle clothing protection was brought in in 1993 by the European Union. It wasn't about the safety of motorcyclists. It was a protectionist law brought in after lobbying by the European motorcycle garment manufacturing industry to stave off cheap imports from Asia. European manufacturers were being decimated by, you know, undercutting from Asian manufacturers. They couldn't compete with them, so they had to put this law in place to make it financially and legally difficult for Asian imports to pervade the market. So, the introduction of CE approval was about money, it wasn't about safety. The EU put together a sort of series of tests and standards that the equipment had to meet, and it was made law that if you wanted to sell PPE for motorcyclists in Europe, it had to fit those specific requirements, otherwise it was illegal. But this didn't quite go according to plan, and CE approval has had to be changed um, several times over the years. To some extent, the tests required weren't really practical, and even some European manufacturers found that they were impossible to meet. And of course, as we all know, a lot of these um, Asian manufacturers, rather than getting CE approval for their products, they just found a way of stamping their products with a fake CE approval. And there was, and to some extent still is, no effective policing of these Asian imports. If you buy a motorcycle jacket that contains armour with fake CE approval on it, it's a matter for trading standards, no one else. Now, this brings me to my first concern about uh, CE approved armoured clothing. Proper CE approved elbow, shoulder and back protectors on their own, before you even think about the garment to put them in, will cost you around about £100. Because it's expensive to produce, not just in manufacturing, but getting it through all the relevant testing costs tens of thousands of pounds. So when I get guys lecturing me in the comments section that they've bought a you know, fully armoured jacket for £60 or £100 from some no-named company on some no-named website, it's clear to me that they're probably wearing fake gear and are not aware of it. And this is a big issue with a lot of motorcyclists. They always want something for nothing, and in their quest to achieve that, the buying gear that is probably giving them little to no protection at all, and it's probably made from recycled supermarket carrier bags and Coca-Cola bottles. There's no such thing as a free lunch. So my advice is, buy from a reputable retailer that is an authorised dealer of one of the big manufacturers of PPE clothing, or buy direct from those manufacturers. Do your homework to make sure that you're actually buying a genuine licensed product, not some knockoff from China. Proper gear is expensive, be prepared to spend the money. Put your money where your mouth is. But then we come to the most important aspect of PPE clothing for motorcyclists. You need to have a realistic idea of exactly what protection this clothing is going to give you because it's not a magic force field that is going to protect you in any eventuality. Its protective capabilities are actually very, very limited. And I think I've related to stories in the past on previous videos where, you know, I've ridden with people who drive like complete idiots when they're wearing all the appropriate armour. And then on, on the odd occasion where for some reason I've ridden with them and they weren't wearing it, the riding attitude was completely different because they honestly believe that that armour is a magic bullet that is going to protect them from anything that happens, and it won't. 
I challenge you to go on any website that's been put up by uh, one of the best manufacturers of motorcycle clothing and find the part where it promises or guarantees that you will not suffer injury or death as a result of wearing their protective clothing. You won't find it because they can't make that claim. A human being is a particularly frail sack of meat and bones and if you put it on top of a vehicle travelling at high speed, when things go wrong, that human body is particularly susceptible to injury and death. That is just a fact of life and it's a risk assessment that you take when you decide to become a motorcyclist. Don't get me wrong, good quality armour that fits well is going to reduce risk but you know by how much is impossible to say over my years as a policeman i've visited many um fatal accidents or serious road traffic accidents involving motorcyclists and of those that i can remember in detail i can't think of an instant where modern high quality armor would honestly have made any difference A-rated armour is only rated up to 20 miles an hour. Uh, You know, mopeds, I mean, even mopeds go faster than that. Now, don't quote me on this, but I think double A is rated for 30 or 40 miles an hour, and the highest rated triple A armour is supposed to give protection up to 70 miles an hour. But the armour for all these ratings is pretty much the same. It's impact tested. And the ratings are adjusted uh, the higher you go according to the ability of the garment itself to actually hold together in crashes of you know varying speeds. That certification gives no guarantee of avoidance of death or injury. It can only mitigate severity in some circumstances. Now Armour wasn't specifically developed for road use. I'm casting my mind back many years now to a chance meeting with the founder of one of the companies that I think created the original armour. It was explained to me that the whole reason for armour coming about was at race meetings back in the 70s or 1980s where the founder of the company realised that some racetrack injuries could be reduced by the use of this particular armour idea that it had. And all armour that we use nowadays was derived from that original idea and the development of that product. But a racetrack is very different from a road. For a start, all the vehicles are travelling in the same direction. There's no oncoming traffic. So it's unlikely, even in the event of two vehicles colliding, that you're going to sort of encounter a head-on collision. And in order to make racetracks safe, they don't really have any sort of street furniture, you know, telegraph poles, lamp posts, that kind of thing. And if there is anything that might constitute that sort of hazard, it's mitigated by putting some sort of impact absorption material around it um you know quite often they use hay bales or bales of straw or maybe even some specific sort of impact protection lagging and they do that because even if you're wearing the best armor in the world you come off your bike at 40 miles an hour even 30 miles an hour and you hit a lamp post or a signpost head on it's going to kill you Or you'd be very lucky if it doesn't kill you. Even if you're wearing the best armour money can buy. I can only afford you some protection in the first instance in the event of a fall from your bike. And in the second instance in the event of you sliding down the road. And that's where its protection really ends. It will not protect you against a head-on collision with another vehicle. And it certainly ain't going to be of much use to you if you go underneath a bus or a lorry. And this is a concept that it's obvious to me a lot of commenters on this channel feel to grasp. They think it's a magic bullet, uh, a, a force field that surrounds them that is going to protect them in any eventuality. And that gives them the excuse to behave however they like on the bike. And, you know, it's like that blast suit that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. It's psychological. It has a psychological effect 
that affects their behaviour on motorcycles. The best injury or death protection you can possibly use is that bit of grey matter between your ears. Riding sensibly and responsibly and proactively, you know, not just keeping your own behaviour under control, but monitoring other people's behaviour. And in order to do that, you have to keep your speed down. You need reaction time to what other people are doing. It doesn't matter whose fault it is if a car pulls out in front of you and you hit it. You know, it's no point saying, well, it was his fault, not mine. You need to be of a mindset where you're watching what every other road user is doing and you're getting ready to take evasive action, even if you don't need to take it when it comes to it. Being prepared and watching what other people are doing and predicting what they might do is one of your best defences against those sort of accidents. Now, as it stands at the moment, I have a choice whether or not I wear armoured clothing on a motorcycle. Bearing in mind all those points that I've mentioned up until now, I find motorcycle armour uncomfortable. It's hot and sticky in warm weather. It restricts movement to some extent. So there are times when I choose not to wear it and there are times when I choose to wear it. And those choices are based on a sort of a, a risk assessment that I make before any given ride. There's no doubt about it, wearing the best that you can afford is a very sensible option if you want to avoid as much as is humanly possible injury. But that's down to your personal choice as it is down to my personal choice and what I won't do on this channel is pander to other people's criticism or attempts to sort of shame me or you know advocate that I'm in some way misleading or teaching unsafe practices. This channel provides content for adults and as adults I expect you to make your own decisions, your own choices. It's not for me to tell you what to do. I ride motorcycles now for pleasure and I want to extract as much pleasure from that experience as I possibly can. Which means I will choose what I wear on a motorcycle. I don't subscribe to this sort of um, work cancel culture thought checking culture that seems to pervade the internet and YouTube these days. I think it's a very worrying development of the human condition that shouldn't be encouraged. So I will just continue to do what pleases me and you do what pleases you. And if one day something happens whereby I'm not wearing armour and I'll live to regret it, that's on me and I'll live with it. Right, this video has overrun somewhat, so I shall bid you goodbye. Um, I'll be back, obviously, next week. So until then, ride safely, and I'll see you soon.